everybody, this is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog on green building and building science. I'm here at a new construction house in Westlake. This is a suburb of Austin, Texas. Uh, we're building a new home here with Heimseth Architects. And I wanted to take a minute at this stage of construction to talk to you a little bit about air sealing. You really only get one good chance to air seal a house prior to the drywall going in. And I wanted to show you a fairly new method we're doing to, to air seal our houses. Our motto at Reisinger Homes is build tight, ventilate right. We want to build the tightest envelope we can, build the enclosure as tight as possible from air leaks, and then bring in fresh air when we want that fresh air to come in. Especially in Austin. We've got a lot of allergies uh, here in Austin, a lot of pollen in the air, a lot of mold spores, things that cause allergies to our uh, clients. We want to make sure that the air in our houses is fresh and filtered and not streaming in from the outside. So one of the ways that we're doing that in this house, we're using a very uh, new method we're spraying Owens Corning Energy Complete, which is a two-part insulation and air sealing system. And I want to show you this. It's, it's pretty uh, revolutionary. It's the first time we've done it. It's actually the first house in Austin, Texas, to my knowledge, that, that's had it. Places where you have multiple studs coming together uh, are notorious zones to get some air leakage through there. If you've sandwiched two or three studs together, that small gap in between those studs can be just enough to let some air leakage in. Another place that's notorious air leaking is these bottom plate connections where you've got your subfloor running continuous and you've got a, uh, a bottom plate that's a 2 by 6 bottom plate. It's really hard to get a perfect air seal in those locations. In the past, we've used construction adhesive on those, but even with that, you sometimes get some gappage and uh, it's not always a perfect air seal. With this system, this is by Owens Corning, it's a two-part latex-based product. It's actually sort of like a sprayable caulking and uh, it's got some flexibility. I don't know if you can see on the camera there, but it squishes in a little bit. So when that drywall sandwiches up to that, it's going to make a really nice gasket. And the guys have started spraying this house. If you pan back, you can see we sprayed all our bottom plate connections, all our stud to stud connections, any place where we've got an OSB seam, they've sprayed those areas. And uh, I really think it's going to be an amazing air seal. The part two of this system is the insulation, which is a fairly standard bib system. You've probably seen it on my videos in the past, but we're going to net these walls and then fill it full of fiberglass. So we'll actually have five and a half inches of perfect uh, fiberglass bat insulation in there because it's blown in. Let's walk over to the next room and the guys from TNN Insulation down in San Antonio are spraying the uh, energy complete on these walls. Let me show you what it looks like. All right, we're in the next room over and these guys are spraying up there on, the, uh, on that top plate. As I mentioned, it's a latex-based product, so we don't have we don't have a lot of off-gassing or harmful chemicals. There's no smell in the air now. Um, pretty amazing system. And so they're gonna they're gonna spray all those areas where we've got some wood-to-wood -wood connections, and there could be some possible leakage of air through those areas. Hey guys, do me a favor. Will you spray this bottom plate connection for me on the video so we can see what that looks like? All right, let's get a little footage of these guys spraying the bottom here. When I've used spray foam in the past, this is one area that spray foam I think lacks in terms of uh, air sealing, is these types of connections which are outboard of the studs. When you're using spray foam, spray foam does a great job of air sealing the cavity because it's both an air sealer and an insulator. But in this case, we're using a product that's just for air sealing at these locations that are vulnerable. I think it's a really good system. Let's go downstairs and I'll show you the spray equipment that we're using. Hey, we're back the next day. Um, yesterday, we showed you in the video how they were spraying this pink stuff. And then today, we've netted off those walls. So like this wall right here, they haven't netted this yet. Uh, in fact, this wall won't be netted. This is garage on the other side, so we want to spray from that cavity. But that pink stuff um, has done a really nice job of sealing all those potential air leaks in there. And then the next step on this uh, system with Owens, Owens Corning Energy Complete is to net these walls off with this fabric netting. And then they're going to blow in uh, what we call a, a bibs system, a blown in blanket system. So this entire 2x6 cavity is going to get filled with a custom fiberglass bat. So let's uh, turn the video off real quick and we'll show you what that looks like. All right, William is over here filling our cavities. He just finished with this one. You can see it's been fully netted off and he's poking a hole and then he's going to fill that with a perfect of fiberglass total fill. So let's go ahead and see how it works, William. He's got a little remote in his hand here. 
you can see that the truck is out on the outside. There's a guy in there filling that with uh, with fiberglass, glass. And then William's just filling that whole 2x6 cavity. So now we've got five and a half inches of fiberglass insulation. And each individual bat is a perfect fill. Unlike a uh, unlike another uh, fiberglass bat system where you'd have to cut around wires and do all that sort of thing, this is getting a perfect total fill of that cavity every single time. Takes a little while though. Very cool. Thanks, William. So you've seen the Owens Corning Energy Complete System now. Next step for this house is uh, tomorrow the spray foam insulator is coming. Uh, we're spraying open cell Demolec on the rest of the house in the uh, attic areas, up against the walls where the garage is, and also on the uh, band joist areas where our uh, floor trusses are coming. So we'll show you that uh, when those guys come tomorrow. Hey everybody, we're back. It's been about uh, two days now. The insulation contractors are finished over here and we're uh, ready for inspections tomorrow. Let me show you what we've got. I think in the last video that, we're, that we just finished up, um, we had finished spraying all the pink stuff here. This is uh, stage one of that Owens Corning Energy Complete. Then they've netted this uh, wall off. They've blown all these uh, completes. And then our foam contractor came in behind him and spray foamed our roof area, uh, as well as our truss bays and our garage walls. So we've got six and a half inches of spray foam at that roof deck. And I think I may have mentioned before, this house has an exterior rigid foam as well. So we've got three quarter uh, inch of rigid foam on the outside of this house. So this is a very, very well insulated. And what I'm especially proud of is a very, very well air sealed home as well. We're going to do really well in our blower door tests. And um, I'll tell you one thing I do want to show you though, is there's a couple areas that we didn't use that Owens Corning Energy Complete. Let's go down and I want to show you a couple of truss areas and I want to show you the walls between the house and the garage. So let's turn the video off and we'll go down. So one, one thing I wanted to show you in the video, here's our floor trusses. I'm a big fan of these 2x4 floor trusses. Where those floor trusses end at the, ends, at the outside of the house is an area that uh, if you insulated that with traditional fiberglass would not get sealed very well at all. You really need to foam those areas. And then we're in the laundry room of this house. The garage is on the other side here. I don't know if you can see through this wall. There'll be a, a, a door to the garage, a fire door to the garage. These walls, we still use the uh, step one of the air sealing, but these walls in my book really need to be spray foamed uh, because we're trying to make sure that there's zero airflow between the garage air and the house air. And then let's walk out to the uh, garage area real quick. I want to show you also the ceiling in the garage area. So we're in the garage of this house. This is a, two-car garage bay you can see here. Above us is a, a bonus room, basically the client's media room uh, upstairs. And this, ro this roof in here has been spray foamed. Again, it's, it's done a lot with fiberglass and houses under construction, but it's not a great way to insulate. The fiberglass is gonna fall over time. It's really hard to get uh, good uh, continuous insulation through there. So this is a perfect application for spray foam. Uh, I think we've covered everything on this house. It's really a very interesting house because it's got uh, two types of insulation. Again, we've got the Owens Corning Energy Complete on all our walls. We've got uh, all the attic areas uh, enclosed with six and a half inches of open cell spray foam. And then I think I mentioned we've got the uh, three quarter inch of rigid foam on the outside. So this should make a very, very tight air sealed house and also a very comfortable house because we've got a really thick insulation blanket with no gaps and we've used the best of several systems to make to really build the best possible house we could. Thanks for joining me, everybody. We'll see you hey, next sorry, time. Sorry, post note, I forgot to tell you one thing. Uh, I've learned over the years with experience, the best way to spray foam in between the house and the garage is to plan for it ahead of time. Uh, that that sheetrock wall that we've got there, that sheetrock's in place as a spray foam backer. Above that, you can see that uh, plywood and OSB up there. That is, is simply a spray foam backer. And you can see all the, all the utilities running through there. My trades have run wires and some pipes, some ventilation, uh, exhaust fans, and a few things. Uh, when I first started spray foaming garages, I forgot to put a backer up there first. And I remember the very first one, I spent a good 30 minutes uh, per bay uh, trying to fit around pipes and wires. So now I have my frame carpenters put a continuous uh, plywood barrier up there. Then we can spray foam the backside. The other thing I forgot to mention, the other big reason to spray foam the ceiling in here is for air sealing purposes. The garage air is not air we want to get into our houses. 
and this is the area of the house that's super important to air seal. And uh, on some other videos, you've seen me talk about this, but that fan in the garage there is a Panasonic Whisper Green fan that is a continuous duty exhaust uh, motor with a motion sensor. So when someone pulls a car in, it's going to kick up into high speed, 150 CFMs. After about 45 minutes, it'll kick back down at a low speed, which we can set varying between like 20 and 75 CFM, depending on what we want. So we're doing everything we can to keep the house's air and the garage air separate. All right, everybody, now I'm really finished. Have a good day. We'll see you soon.